Art is too important not to share. Welcome to the Allie and Callie Artcast. Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Callie, and we're with the Coeur d'Alene Arts and Culture Alliance. Hello, everyone. Hello, and how are you, Callie? I am dandy. You're looking so tan. I know, it's my spray. <laughs> <laughs> it's not natural. Can you see the orangeness of it? I see some little streaks. <laughs> I'm not a very good tanner. And your legs are a little mosaic. I, don't look too close. It's like the Mojave Desert. You know, these legs, not so good. Well, I'll tell you why. Because we were in the Three Seas Fashion Show. We were. And I was afraid that my white legs might scare people. They were so Might blind white. people. Yeah, blind them right? to death. But wasn't that fun? That was so fun. So we modeled for marmalade. Yep. And that those were fun dresses. Yes. But then for um, Say Yes Bridal. Yes. We wanted to be brides, we but did. they gave us mother of the they bride. They made us be mothers of the bride. <laughs> which, <laughs> which we thought we would have really dumpy outfits, but we had pretty we had cool outfits. We had beautiful dresses. Yeah. I would love to have mine. Yeah. If it fit better. The only, the yeah. only thing about my dress is that I felt like I was wearing somebody's drapes. <laughs> You, you said it looked like I was a couch cover. A couch or cover. It was a really pretty dress. It was a really though. pretty dress. You were a lady in red. It was pretty fun. Yeah. It was pretty fun walking out there down the runway and having people they scream knew your my name. name. Yes. That was weird. No one. And I couldn't see them. I so had, I didn't know who it was. Yeah. It was very funny. No one screamed my name, but I did ask for attention. <laughs> Let's just say that. It was super fun and it I was. hope they raised a lot of money and and mm-hmm. we might be knocking on their doors. That's right. Yeah. To uh, because they the 3 Cs raises this money to um to uh not only fund so, mm-hmm. people's the cancer Projects. charities, but mm-hmm. also other charities in the in the right. area and surrounding and areas. Yeah, so, we need to look into that. Yeah, so th- it was a great money. evening, and it was a nice full house, and mm-hmm. we had fun. Right. It was super fun, so I'm glad we got to do that. Yeah. I've got some other exciting news. Yeah. What? Uh, the uh, posts are up in <gasps> the... At Riverstone. At Riverstone, and they're beautiful. They're yeah. majestic looking. I love it. I know. So we're like one step closer. The pill- of but music. I feel like we're actually, you know, like three, no, like seven eighths of the way there. You're so close. Yeah. All That's we only need are the sales left. Right. <laughs> That's good you math. You know math. <laughs> <laughs> I took algebra. <laughs> You did? And that's it. I, that's as far I as I went. I think that's about as far as I yeah, went, Yeah, I'm not really a math person. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure. I'm so excited. And our first concert, let's just remind everybody, first concert is? July 6th. So. And it's New Jack City. That will be fun. And we're celebrating the shade cover. Shade cover. And the amazing organizations, businesses, and individuals who help contribute to make All it those happen. great donors. So thank yeah. you, everyone. Yes. Can't wait. And Geno Construction. I have to give them a shout out because they made it happen. Yes. And also a shout out to Allie, who made it happen. Oh, you did. You helped. <laughs> it in, was just perseverance. You pounded the pavement. You made it happen. Was, you knocked on those doors. So. Yep. So, yay. Yay. Yay, yes. <laughs> so, today we're really excited to have Stephen Shortridge yes. and Haley Shortridge Gabriel here yes. visiting with us. Thanks for being here, you guys. Thanks yeah. For having us. yeah. We should do harmony. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hit it, Harmony. I know. <laughs> I love so it. So Steve has a new gallery mm-hmm. in um, Mix It Up home. Gift. Home. No, home. home. Mix It Up Home. Home. And uh, we went there last Art Walk to see the opening. Mm-hmm. Nope. I mean, no. the art walk before. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, <laughs> two art walks. I to be the one of where you were there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I went to Cabo. I know. Yeah. You had to leave early because you had to go to a Journey oh, concert. we did do that. Yeah. Well, that was a good fun. idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I was there until about 7.30. Got in time to see the last song from Toto. Oh. They sang Africa, so we saw Toto a little. Okay. Yeah. And then it was break, and then it was, uh, you know, Back full on show. That's fun. cool. Yeah. Fun. It, was, it was really fun. Yeah, I bet. So how like, it's nice to know all the words to the songs. 
I agree. Right. I agree. Right. So how does it feel being back in a gallery? Yeah. Um, well, you've been in Mix It yeah. Up before. But yeah, I mean, but it's nice to... What was nice about it was it made me do stuff. Mm-hmm. So I kind of got lethargic, and I kind of really lost a lot of confidence oh. to paint. Um, uh, so that was... It was a good thing, mm-hmm. just to make me get off my butt, and and at the same time, then I, I really like writing, and so then I've been really serious about that. Mm-hmm. So I kind of woke up a bit, which was nice because yeah. it's, it's been a little stupery, mm-hmm. you know, since having the gallery and everything, and so it was, it was nice to um, kind of go at it again and try to do some new things, um, be a little more contemporary, maybe sometimes, but mm-hmm. I'm still me. I. There's no reason to well, I hope be so. something else. Well, I mean, you know, you, you, you start to chase other things mm-hmm. because maybe somebody's successful at something and then you, you realize, oh, that's kind of Ichabod. It doesn't really work. <laughs> yeah. um, and, it, and then it's, it's a step away from who you are. Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's a challenge as an artist to, uh, you know, and Haley's an artist too. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's, you know, we've talked about that kind of thing. It's really difficult. It's actually really pretty easy, not easy, but easier to copy somebody else oh. Oh, yeah. than to try to be who you really are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's that's tricky. Yeah. Not the easiest. Right. Authentic. And ha- Haley, you do art and you used to, when, when your dad had um, the painter's chair, you used to have a little section in there with yeah. your art. Yeah. It was awesome. Are you still doing art? I am trying. Yeah. Since then I've, I've had two children and mm-hmm. um, started another business that is... Uh, Yep. growing and great and so mm-hmm. it obviously swoops up with a lot of time so right i keep buying canvases like <laughs> <blank> canvases <laughs> that just stare at me and but you still are doing art because you're the i mean you're you're still doing art aren't you i mean yeah. it's a different kind of art it's not True. painting so um <clears throat> gosh it's been 10 years i started true life canvas um oh in Ten years. Yeah. Holy moly. So mm-hmm. in going with the same theme, theme of heading towards uh, the human canvas, mm-hmm. so calling it true life canvas towards people, um, mm-hmm. started doing permanent cosmetics, so eyebrows, eyeliner, lips. Um, but my the reason I got into it was discovering you could do areola work for women that have mm-hmm. undergone mastectomies or, you know, different things too. Um had a client in today with vitiligo or you know there's just different or scars that are insecurities for people that I can camouflage for them or Mm -hmm. so um yeah that's really cool yeah 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 I was sitting with your dad once it's been a little while but he showed me some photos of your work and it's amazing the, yeah. What you were doing for women who, you know, are had their breasts rebuilt mm-hmm. and um, just to feel normal again. And what you what you did made them look like they had oh, nipples. They, yeah, uh, they, they I've seen, you know, they wept. Mm. Yeah. You know, Ooh, and one yeah. thing, yeah. Haley's also showed me, <laughs> I'm bragging on her, but she's shown me some that other people do. That are not, that are not, not as good. Not so great. Oh, uh, wow. You know, and, and then say she can actually match mm-hmm. the other breast. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, it's amazing because she is a good artist. And so mm-hmm. she's taking those skills and doing it there. And I was just, as you were talking, I was thinking, you're, I, I feel your pain. I know you want to paint. And mm-hmm. you know, secretly there's this real drive for her and it's so similar to like when when you were growing up and <laughs> we had these gift stores and her mom you know yeah. and I was just busy as heck and I mm-hmm. it, I was wanting to paint so bad and so I would try to paint but it's it's really hard when uh, I didn't get to be a workaholic in art until after you guys were older mm-hmm. uh, it was difficult with little kids and, and it, it didn't seem the right thing to do right so right. Uh, so your time's coming yeah, yeah. yeah. it is I know so <laughs> I mean, it's like that <laughs> double edge <laughs> where they grew up so fast. We were like, oh, yeah, yeah, right. I know. So there's that too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're seven and eight and they're just mm-hmm. growing so fast. So, yeah. well, how did you get into that? Um, permanent cosmetics? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, like I was saying, discovering that I was kind of in an interesting spot trying to figure out, like, how hard do I want to pursue art? Mm-hmm. Um, it's scary. <laughs> yeah. <And> it's not <laughs> always reliable. Yeah. Um, exactly. And so I kept always trying to think like, well, is there something creative that I get to work with people instead of just being alone in a studio? Um, So that's where that spawned from realizing I could help people with my art. Mm -hmm. Um, 
now being alone in a studio doesn't sound as awful as it did <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, just, you know. It, it, you know, it's, to me, it was energy. Um, and, and there's time. But, I mean, you can find the time, but sometimes you go, well, I finally blocked it out. Hey, I got 8 to midnight, and I don't work at night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't my either. time clock is, I got up this morning at 4. Yeah. And yeah. Um, mm-hmm. so, yeah, you, you may find the time, but then you're just so tuckered. You just, you're it's like, really hard to actually yeah. produce. Right. Yep. I'm the same as you. So yeah. I'm, I don't enjoy waking up early, but I have been forcing myself. When I'm doing well, I'm waking up at 5, just to even get a workout in so I can function mm-hmm. and not be reactive all day with my kids or whatever. Mm-hmm. But She's much better than I am. <laughs> Those disciplinary things, but then I still don't paint. Well, <laughs> oh, it, you know. well, you got a lot on the you got a lot on yeah, the schedule. A lot on your right. plate. Yeah. How old biggest. are the kids? They're seven and eight. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. a great They're age. Swanson. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's great. And so, like you were talking about, you didn't use the word guilt, but it's the guilt of feeling like it's it's selfish to go find time to paint when mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm going to make any money for a family off of it. That's right. the other thing. It's like. Oh, it's a hobby, right? Right. Like, no, I'm actually trying. I, I would like <laughs> to make money doing stuff. this. Right. Yeah. And, and but it, it's 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 difficult when you start because everybody, no, not many people really make money at it. Mm. Right. And so when you first start, it's kind of like, oh, that's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, All right. Well, yeah, but no, I, I I think I could maybe do it. Mm-hmm. And it really, in the way I put it, I had ten years of practice, professional practice, mm-hmm. before I was able to paint close to what I could see. I mm-hmm. still see better than I can paint. And that's that would be normal in, in my way of thinking about creativity. It's like if I'm always surprised when people don't change mm-hmm. in some ways at least or try things even if they fail and it's it's odd mm-hmm. to me. Somebody who's creative, you know, you're saying I'm creative and then and then you kind of just keep replicating the same things. I mean I started successful I, I got successful with pianos and then I wanted to shoot myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because after a while you're it's like, like oh, well another piano. But see this what this is market too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So you give a gallery five pieces and two of them are pianos. The two pianos sell. Right. What do they want? They want more pianos. Two more pianos. Oh boy! <laughs> and so, and at the time, they were popular and whatever, and that's fine. And I'm, uh-huh. you know, I'm not like whining about it. I was happy about it. But that's, it's just interesting. It's I mean, when you meet the creative with the business, it's, yep. it's really weird sometimes. Yeah. Right. And I will say, I have my piano. <laughs> it's above my fireplace. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen. <laughs> no, I mean, but I, I do love it. Because I don't like it. You know, I know. Paint no, them over and right. over. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, I get it. But that's funny. <laughs> oh. What do you love to paint, Haley? That's a tough question. I think uh, I gravitate a lot towards color, maybe first. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I love colors. So, um, but random I love sky and water but then sometimes I do quirky animals so Mm -hmm. I think I'm still it's tough because I've watched you be able to paint so many different things Mm -hmm. I got away with it but yeah but it isn't always successful Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's really successful is to paint the same thing over and over right which is a trap (laughs) right right? yeah and then then you are stuck and Mm -hmm. you've been labeled a certain way and Mm -hmm. you can't break out of it and so Mm -hmm. I get inspired by a lot of different things and I try a bunch of different things and right now I'm in the stage where nobody's expecting anything from me so I get to try and mimic or whatever you know Mm -hmm. which is really a great place to be yeah yeah it is while I figure out my voice you know mm-hmm. but in the process you know stealing yeah. from others in creativity yeah. is helpful sometimes to just figure out what you're capable of and then you make it your own right so mm-hmm. I don't mean stealing literally but being inspired to inspired and right. and yeah. I mean that's yeah. kind of how I learned how to paint is like I saw a painting and I went I want to do something like that and I would just start painting and go, well, that's my version of that sure. painting. Because yeah. mm-hmm. it never turned out anything like that painting. And I would, it, you know, it had my flair to it, which is com- more colors usually and no animals and no people. Because mm-hmm. I was like, I don't do those, you know, a little too real. I like more abstract, yeah, you know. Right. But that's, it. 
I, I think of it as honoring someone's painting, saying, I liked it so much mm-hmm. that I want to learn from you, totally. and I can't maybe take a class from you, because I don't know where you live, but I really <laughs> like your painting, so I'm going to... Well, and I think yeah. there's also something to the fact that artists inspire each other, yes. yeah. and we learn from each other, and, you know, we'll learn maybe some different techniques from each other, mm-hmm. and then we and then we adapt it and make it our own, mm-hmm. so it's really a, a nice collaborative effort. There's a really great book, um, Steal Like an Artist. Um, and it's, I think his name's Cleon. I don't know. You gave me the book. I think but it's fantastic. I was about to say, you gave well, me the book. Well, he's saying Steal Like an Artist, and he's saying honor. He's yeah. not saying steal, like theft. He's saying yeah. Yeah. borrow the idea, mm-hmm. make it your own, give them credit even. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. fine. Um, you know, most things have been done. Um, yeah. And so it's really diffi- It's really exciting, actually, when I see something, I think, well, I haven't That's seen that. That's different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and the things I was attracted to were mostly kind of older paintings, actually. So I was trying to paint like dead people, <laughs> and um, but but it's really different. And I know you've liked some of the other abstracts and things too, and I, I do too. I just don't feel as comfortable doing it, yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. but I do enjoy it. Yeah, I have one that's over our fireplace um, that's really big, and I, and I started using rollers, you know, to oh. get these textures. And oh yeah. I did them so much it, the painting actually looks like something that's been woven because mm. there's a lot of patterns in it you know oh cool that, yeah it's kind of neat and uh, I like doing that I mean I'll probably do more of those mm-hmm. yeah too. they're like ink rollers yeah they're like brayers like rubber oh, yeah oh, right. that's fun yeah and so you don't you don't lay paint on them basically you're shoving paint around and oh, <laughs> picking it right. up and throwing back yeah. on and grabbing mm-hmm. some you know medium so that everything's getting flowy yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of fun yeah that's fun that yeah fun. Hey ladies, have you heard about Nia yet? Hi, I'm Marilee Wallace and I'm a proud board member of the Coeur d'Alene Arts and Culture Alliance and owner of Nia. That's short for the North Idaho Alliance. We specialize in leadership development specifically focused in connecting women to programs, workshops, and networking to educate, empower, and enrich their lives. Our goal is to make positive impacts in the community while helping other women in North Idaho succeed. Next up is our annual Onward and Upwards Women's Conference set for May 24th and our new event Women with Cool Jobs scheduled for early summer and then keep a lookout to register for our super popular Women of Impact Leadership Roundtable Series that begins every September so I hope you'll look us up we're at thenorthidahoalliance.com find us on Facebook or just give us a call 208-660-1557 go out and make it an impactful day so, Haley, talk a little bit about growing up with your dad and just, you know, how you got to where you are now. Yeah. So, I think what was nice is, as you've explained over the years, you got to be a lot more present than than maybe I even appreciated at the time, not realizing that wasn't normal, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, actors are unemployed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, yeah. No, I was home. Yeah, there's that. I, I, was, I was home a lot when you were little. Because um, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd started, you know, and I've done a lot of things that most people don't get to do and make money at. I was a model first, and I didn't mean to. And then I ended up doing commercials, and then I ended up having an agent, and I started doing acting. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't really, art was always kind of my hope. Um, mm-hmm. But I did those other things, and I thought, you know, why not? But <laughs> I thought when I got Welcome Back Cotter that I'd join the club. There's oh, no, right. There's no club. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, dang. Dang. And <laughs> so, and I, you know, I started working, and I had a lot of really close good big successes but um kind of glad they actually didn't work out but mm-hmm. that's another story but but when we were when i was when you were really little those years i was kind of waiting to be a star mm-hmm. and and it's funny because you know you're not making any money right you know so like one year i drive a 68 volkswagen and the next year it's a 68 porsche you know <laughs> so i mean it was just like that and so you just you lived kind of gypsy-ish a little mm-hmm. and, but we had a nice house mm-hmm. in sherman oaks but that being home with them ended up being a really neat time um mm-hmm. that i'd look back on now and i'm thankful for because most guys don't get to do that right um, you know i just have to go out for an interview and stuff but the rest of the time we'd be kind of around or doing stuff or mm-hmm. goofing off or whatever mm-hmm. um but that was acting was an interesting thing and mm-hmm. then we were talking about it but you know it's like when they were little, they didn't know 
I was an actor and you know I didn't make a big deal out of it mm -hmm. and then we had friends um, a lot of people might know Grant Goody from It yeah. Is Enough well mm -hmm. he had two daughters the exact same ages as, as ours oh and so they kind of grew up together and so it's kind of you like, guys were friends yeah yeah you actually oh. called it Emily on the way here yeah, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. we're still friends still oh that's close. cool yeah. but that you know but what's funny it was it's like oh well do you, hey, Dad's on TV. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, we like don't want to watch that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, fine. And, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and so, and and it stayed like that. I don't mm -hmm. think you ever. We never made a big deal out of it. No. And but you didn't either. And it was kind of like, oh, okay. And by the time you were older and knew about it, I was already moved on. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Well, and I think maybe moving here and. Yeah. When did you move here? I was eight. Yeah. 1990. Yeah. Oh, so you were pretty young. Yeah. 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 So I think maybe even like recognize, starting to recognize it more because people would say stuff, but then wanting to fit in and like not be a Californian, you know? Like, right. <laughs> right. Like, shh, let's not. Don't let anyone know. <laughs> Come on, Dad, please. <laughs> Don't stand out. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> well, did you get that? Did you paint with your dad? I mean, if he was around so much, what... You know, what were you doing? Yeah. We, I didn't was, paint that much Yeah, you then. didn't paint as much um, at home mm. either. Well, you when you were really little, I did. When we were in Sherman Oaks, there were a lot of actors that were painters. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, Peter, really? Peter Falk was in the gallery I was in. and You know, people like that that mm -hmm. you know some of the names. Some of them you don't, but they're, they were kind of around good mm -hmm. actors. But so it was kind of I was in that, and I was experimenting kind of where you've been yeah. um, mm -hmm. I was experimenting all kinds of different styles mm -hmm. but I really did like paint um, when I mean that I, I, I like to see paint and paint strokes and mm -hmm. texture and um, broken color I, I don't like everything licked you know mm -hmm. um, so I, I love that that aspect but yeah when I was there I didn't paint much that time at that time and then later I was trying to get out of acting and started a wood business and you remember that oh probably. yeah I so I was built. I was I had an illegal wood uh, business out of the garage. I was surprised it didn't just blow up. You know, there's sawdust everywhere. And, Probably kicking through the house. Yeah, and, you know, designing stuff. Uh, you know, it, uh, her mom wanted to start a gift store, and I, mm -hmm. and so I said, well, I'll make the stuff. So it was that was someone ducks and cut out ducks and stuff was yeah, big. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then I made headboards, and I was actually in some national situations but it, I worked my butt off and I wasn't making any money and I was risking everything <laughs> I thought after a little bit I said oh this isn't making any sense yeah. <laughs> so, right. so we opened the store mm -hmm. on a credit card mm. oh wow yeah everybody always thinks you know actors make a lot of money I, I was successful enough to have a home and kids in private school you know mm -hmm. uh, private Christian school and that was successful mm -hmm. um, yeah uh, most of those guys just you know barely get by it's not what people think I mean mm -hmm. and, and you know if you found any job that you see that you think wow I'd like that job well you go talk to them enough and you'll go oh every job has some drawbacks or some things you don't want to be doing but you have to right and um, so yeah yeah what did you think as a kid yeah I'm curious I actually we I don't know talked about it. <laughs> yeah our childhood is pretty idyllic like I just remember riding bikes and having mm -hmm. fun and Getting to go on set with you sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When did you start painting? Not until my senior year of college. Really? Yeah. So I came home to visit. I think it was like Christmas break or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mom and dad had plans. So I was home alone. And mm -hmm. at that point, your studio was back in the house. Oh, I had a nice studio. Yeah. And yeah. so like a really nice studio and I kind of was super bored so I was just milling around and went out there and started messing around with paints I was like oh I don't know maybe I could paint but I was I was an athlete as oh. a kid growing mm -hmm. up so mm -hmm. it was like sports was the focus and mm -hmm. um even in college like played soccer at college so it was just that was his thing he was really good at and I didn't think I wasn't creative but I just didn't even I didn't try, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was my first attempt at trying, and I think you came home and you're like, "Whoa!" <laughs> so, <laughs> Keep going. So then I kind of validated, "Oh, maybe, maybe I'm not just, mm -hmm. you know, because I do doodles at mm -hmm. school, but they look like everyone else's do, like the eyeball and mm -hmm. the sun right. or flower or whatever, you know, nothing." Mm -hmm. 
they looked like everyone else's because I wasn't yeah trying that hard at it right but, so to get validation I guess from somebody that I knew was successful at mm-hmm. it made me be like oh maybe I should try this so I went back um in the next semester enrolled in an art class in college mm-hmm. and oh and that's it, great yeah yeah I didn't realize that was the timing mm-hmm. but yeah I, I, I kind of always wanted to encourage you guys to just be creative mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but I also never wanted you to not do what you wanted to do right. mm-hmm. you know I mean her sister Stephanie was when she was five she was like crazy she's a good athlete mm-hmm. and Haley would work harder but you know yeah you had the same gifts in different ways and mm-hmm. it was just interesting but I, I'd watch other parents push their kids and um, you know we know we know of a few that yeah. you know you go wow it blew the kid up yeah <laughs> it's just like, right yeah I so hate it yeah I'm I don't never ever want to do it, do it so again it's like, yeah. yeah I wanted them to be uh, fully experienced. I didn't want to be a specialist mm-hmm. in life. Um, that's a good way I would put that. Yeah. I would rather you were fully engaged in a lot of areas in living mm-hmm. and, and experimenting and trying things all the time and not getting locked in. Like even soccer was like, mm-hmm. first, you know, any, in ever really since, even, when, even in my lifetime, but more in yours now, you have to be so specialized to succeed in sports mm-hmm. and in a lot of things mm-hmm. you, to the extent that the rest of your life is being damaged mm-hmm. I don't like that yeah <laughs> a yeah. lot of pressure yeah. yeah yeah you guys your mom are really good at not putting that pressure on and I feel like I was always I grew up believing I could do anything as long as I want to work for it mm-hmm. and um, they wanted us to be free to make that choice so it was never like one day you're going to like run this business. You know, yeah, like a right. lot of family yeah, cool. businesses are like that. Mm-hmm. And so being around a family business, mm-hmm. what was cool is to see the work ethic it takes to run a business, but right. it was never the pressure of like, this is what we're creating for you. You have to become this person mm-hmm. or whatever they thought right. um, of expectations like that. Right. That's good. Right. Mm-hmm. My mother sure. did the same thing for me. She, I grew up, believing that I could be whatever I wanted to be and I, and I give her a lot do of, it. and I could do it <laughs> yeah so then I moved to Idaho and she cried her eyes out <laughs> but she next. also forced me to take piano lessons <laughs> that was a bust because I didn't want to <laughs> she's just hopeful so that yeah. was yeah that just reminded me of the you know getting pushed in something and saying no I'm not doing that anymore <laughs> yeah I tried um he's really good at the piano and so is my sister Stephanie read. naturally they can just play oh, and I yeah. actually had the desire I even took it in college again because uh-huh. I was like I'm, I want to play yeah. an instrument and I was just like I can't read it <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it it doesn't work I yeah. think it's like the math side of the brain or something right <laughs> well, I I can't read music. I like making up music and I can play music, but mm-hmm. I can't read it. And I didn't realize, I'm dyslexic. I think I'm getting worse. Um, oh. I'm nice. having a really hard time. But I was actually trying to learn the piano and try to read, and then I just got so frustrated I stopped, kind of. And then I, I traded art for a cello because the cello is my favorite instrument. Uh, I so like I, to, yeah. I got a cello, and you know, Kevin Heck McPana, he's, he's like a big deal. Mm. Um, he's. I think he's a Whitworth. Mm. Oh. And he used to come over to NIC, and I'd go over there with my student cello. And you know, <laughs> well, I, was, I had a little better than one because I traded for it. So it was mm-hmm. pretty yeah. nice. And I would never progress. And I think he just thought I was lazy and stupid. But I, I wasn't. I was really like, actually trying. But I was always kind of at the same level because I was trying to read these notes. And then I kind of gave it up. Mm-hmm. And he was very nice to me. I, I mean, hi, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> he really was. But, and, and I thought he put up with a lot because, you know, he, he was teaching kids who were really good. Mm-hmm. And then I show up. And, um, but later I realized it's, it's the frickin' notes. Mm-hmm. They're all the same, but they're all on the same lines. And some of them are upside down and backwards. And some of them are connected and some aren't. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, that's a nightmare for a dyslexia. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, you know, whether you have a little or a lot. That's mm-hmm. like impossible. Yeah, I can't imagine. Right. So I still have it. I'm kind of think about just getting it and just making noises mm-hmm. because I like that. I mm-hmm. love the sound. Hey, y'all. It's Jason from Tubbs Coffee Roasters. We are North Idaho's specialty coffee roaster. We are homegrown and we are local. We love coffee and we love our community, especially Allie and Callie in Artcast. 
We have a retail space in our roastery in Hayden, and we can also be found on the shelves at Super One and Yolks. And if you like to buy coffee online, we do offer subscriptions. You can find us at tubscoffeeroasters.com. Support arts and culture and your local roaster. That's all. So you're working on your next book, correct? Yeah. So when can we expect that next book? Well, it's closer because I've been, I went to Cabo and I would, I would get up at like 3.30 and 4 and I'd go out, you know, once it got light enough, but I'd, I'd start working and then I'd go out and watch sunrise and there it was like at 5.30 mm-hmm. and watch the sun just come up, you know. Nice. And uh, I got a lot done. Okay. I mean, I've, I've had it done. I thought it was done many times now, <laughs> but now I'm realizing, I'm thinking, how can you write such crap <laughs> and, and think it's good? And I'm uh, fascinating how we can... Um, fool ourselves. Mm-hmm. I just used a quote by Richard Feynman, who's this, uh, you know, he's like the physics guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He says something, he says, Don't, you can't allow yourself to be fooled and you're the easiest one to fool. <laughs> 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 you know, you got a problem. Yeah. Right. But when you can't see, and that's kind of what, you know, we've talked about those things in art. Um, being able to see your mistakes is, is really a, a leap forward. Mm-hmm. You know, if you think every you do is good, then you're like, oh boy. you're blind. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> you're blind. Yeah. And so if you know that, you know, I could do better or mm, I don't like that part and, and you have the nerve to change it mm-hmm. or, you know, I've seen you go and work and, and go, nah, and, and I do the same. You know, sometimes right it over. looks like I'm going backwards and I'm not. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just the road. Yeah. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. Start over. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Well, yeah. what inspires you, Haley? In what capacity? With your art. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, like I can inspire my love for things. But, um, I think seeing other people be creative, like we talked about, being mm-hmm. inspired by other mm-hmm. creatives and immersing yourself in that. I mean, what's nice about some things of social media, you know, some of them are awful and you go down a rabbit hole, but that you can that the algorithms kind of start to understand what your preferences are. I get so much art now on my So do I. I love it. Constantly. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So I'm always curious, like, ooh, what's that? That's, That's interesting. And, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. clicking on stuff, and there's so many tutorials on there now, and mm-hmm. there's so many ways to be inspired, I feel like. But I love going into galleries, too, mm-hmm. and just getting time in them. So it's, I'm really excited that you have yours back open. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to get some work in there, do you think? If you get some work, you have to get some work. I yeah. Know. You have to get time yeah. to exactly. do it. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. Not really Who sufficient knows? enough to... Mm-hmm. Well, I love yeah. the fact that you you um, came to art, but your dad's an actor and you didn't go into acting. Yeah. I mean, maybe because we lived up here, you know? Oh, right. It's not that maybe I don't love the idea of yeah, acting. I didn't think of that. Yeah. I love... That's probably true stage performances I love watching Mm -hmm. you know to be a connoisseur of Mm -hmm. musicals or whatever I love all the expressions of creativity I'll tell you I think you could have been successful Uh, she was just a cutest kid (laughs) and you know poofed hair she looked like Buffy you know whatever it was (laughs) and um, and and Steffi was beautiful too and you know we had pictures done of them and I thank God, actually, that they didn't hit. Um, when I was working in L.A., you know, I'd work, you know, Todd Bridges was a kid that I spent time with doing, mm-hmm. you know, amusement park things and mm-hmm. stuff. And I was a teen idol at 25 for about a month. And, <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, I mean, that kind of stuff happened. But I was with a lot of younger guys, Adam Rich from Eight is Enough. And we, did a, mm-hmm. uh, we did a Fantasy Island together. So I was, I, I was around these kids and they all messed up. They yeah. all got hurt. Yeah, they right. Did, hard. My parents too. I mean, they'd steal mm-hmm. their money or something. But yeah. it, I, they just couldn't handle what was going on. Mm-hmm. You know, um, just watched Michael J. Fox's documentary oh, yeah, last I did night. Too, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, did you see it? Wasn't that interesting? Yeah, really. He survived, but um, mm-hmm. you look at the crew that he was with. They all went through serious drug and alcohol issues, probably, and right. and the ones that have come out on the other side, um, like Rob Lowe. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, good for them. Yeah. But a lot of the kids didn't, yeah. and I was I was thankful because all it takes is for them to get one movie mm-hmm. or something that's really big hit mm-hmm. and a right. lot of money. In. Yeah, and you know, the first wrong crowd. Well, as parents, you go, well, 
you can pay for your college, <laughs> you know. No, I mean it. I thought, well, you can pay for your college. Yeah, right. um, mm-hmm. It made sense. It does not make sense. But I, I didn't know that at first. And so sure. when it didn't happen and we left and everything and it didn't happen, I thought, whew. It's okay. Right. Dodged yeah. a bullet. Dodged a I bullet. I think so, too. Don't mm-hmm. you? Yeah. I mean, not that there was any for sure that you would be successful, but just looking at other yeah. actors in that situation, like you're saying, mm-hmm. it's not... It's not as appealing as it looks to be. Mm-hmm. Right. And there's such a small, I think I remember seeing a statistic of like, there's a, it's either three or 2% that are actually successful that can make a living mm-hmm. as an actor. And that's, that's not a lot. And then there are people that they find out how, how much did you make last year? ten thousand dollars right and you're like and they live on unemployment the rest of the time and i'm like that is ridiculous yeah you know and yeah. you just like mm-hmm. to me as an actor who's done this for f- over 40 years <laughs> i've always had another job because i don't like not paying the bills right yeah that yeah. makes me sick to my stomach and i also love being with my kids yeah. and my family mm-hmm. and so there i've made a conscious choice not to live in those places and not to do those things sure i never said i, I guess i cared more about my life and my family kind of what you said Mm -hmm. and but and made it wasn't my living it's my passion that I get to do on occasion right and that's enough to fill my void in my life of like oh I love performing you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but if it had to be my force uh, my income Mm -hmm. ooh. Yeah, that that is not me I and I don't know and the people that can do it shout out to you but mm-hmm. that's that's a tough well, life and then maybe you lose your passion for it if you have to do it too yeah it's just it's hard, hard. It's that's the best part of acting I ever did was pretending I was an actor <laughs> <laughs> no I didn't feel like one and I didn't oh. at all I had anxiety about it I you know I thought I was pretender and, and I never fit mm-hmm. but I, I have a interesting I remember it was I don't know, probably from the 80s or 70s. I just remember a statistic. You know, you can't do anything in L.A. without a SAG card, Screen yep. Actors Guild. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't, you can't do anything without it, but you can't get it without doing something. Mm-hmm. Right. It's really a catch-22. So it's really difficult, actually, to get in unless you're a young kid or you do a skate, you're a great skateboarder or something. You know, they go, well, we need you for that Pepsi commercial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the reality was they said that 95% of the union, these are the people that are in the union, yeah. right. don't even make $5,000 a year then. Wow. And um, that's, crazy. That's, that's frightening. Yeah. yeah. It's staggering. And that's yeah. in L.A., yeah. yeah, and that's where most right. of it's done. You right. know, the film and TV. Oh yeah, it's crazy. So it, it was nuts. Mm-hmm. Think twice. <laughs> <laughs> Be an artist. Be uh, do something else. You know. Anyway. Right. No. <laughs> well, Haley, if somebody wanted to um, come and see you and get some work done, where would they find you? Uh, so True Life Canvas is um, my husband and I have built that business now. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, for 10 years, we're down in Riverstone, right next to Z Spa. Oh. And now we're, um, we've grown into a medical spa. So mm-hmm. we do say we're not your typical med spa because our focus is a little more um, holistic and health focused and finding anti-aging solutions that are a little more natural and sustainable instead mm-hmm. of, I mean, we do offer the other things, injectables and things like that, but yeah. more sparingly, our... Our MO is a little more like encouraging everyone in their own beauty and not trying to make people look different when they leave. Right. <laughs> I love that. No, no, it looks like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> All we try and do is rewind and yeah. know, rewind the clock if it's aesthetically, but mm-hmm. we also have things like helping people build muscle, things that actually help you have a better quality of life, mm-hmm. not just focused on aesthetics only. We're trying to improve people's right lives that's great well i love that and sometimes it's just building a little confidence in somebody yeah absolutely letting getting you know them to find that part yeah yeah it's surprising that's so valuable i was saying i got into it originally for the areola work but um i kind of thought i would have to do the cosmetic side in order to make money and that the areola side would be more of a passion project Mm -hmm. um but it's been really shocking over the years how many women or men, honestly, I see men mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's either a source of insecurity that I'm helping them with, you know, 
or maybe they are shaking now they can't apply their makeup very well maybe they're mm-hmm. going blind mm. maybe they just had cancer and none of their hair's coming back right and things that make them feel more whole i right. get to help with mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like so men's eyebrows and stuff yeah mm-hmm. you know masculine guy and he's got no eyebrows yeah yeah <laughs> right well, a lot of communication is nonverbal. i think mm-hmm. it's 90 percent or something yeah. is nonverbal. Mm-hmm. and so if you don't have eyebrows you're losing a lot of communication with people mm-hmm. um and so a lot of people just come in because they want honestly that it's yeah. not even a a vanity thing it's yeah just to be restored yeah know, mm-hmm. back to whatever that was lost right yeah I love that. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So do you have a website? Uh, yes, truelifecanvas.com. Perfect. You'll be able to find all of our, all of our services on there. We'd love to we'd love to serve Coeur d'Alene. So. Awesome. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you're doing that. Thank that's, yeah, I think that's, that's great. Thanks. It's so great having both of you here. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for having us. It was <laughs> fun. Yeah. Well, we'll be looking forward to your book. That's right. Oh, yeah. No, it's Somewhere Velveteen in... Soul. It's going to happen. What's it called? Velveteen Soul. Velveteen Soul. The subtitles, When Will I Be Real? <laughs> That's based on love it. Velveteen Rabbit. I love mm-hmm. it. Or How Toys Become Real. Oh. So it's kind of the, and it's, it's more of a, a, a Christian spiritual thought book. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, I usually write about God and art, or art and God. This one's more about God. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. You know, I, like I said, I was shocked at how bad it was. <laughs> so, not promoting it yet. It's not. It's not there I, yet. I do want to promote Instagram. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. It's uh, Stephen Shortridge Art on Instagram, mm-hmm. and I'm kind of having fun with it. Mm-hmm. And I, I just shared with you guys some stuff that I saw in Mexico. It was so right. beautiful. Yeah. Right. Um, I think that's great. And and just sharing thoughts too. I mean, you know, throwing some stuff I've said, but, um, and the other book that was good for art was The Finger Painted Life, and I use a mm-hmm. lot of that in yeah. that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's got some nice thinking. Yeah. I yeah. Like That's awesome. And Fun. if anybody's interested in seeing your work, now they can go to 305 East Sherman Avenue to mix it up home and see your little gallery. Yep. That's right. Yep. Yay. Yeah, it's really nice. Stuffed with too much art, but that's <laughs> okay. Know. But I'll tell you <laughs> what, that, that space is it's great. beautiful. It is. Yeah. 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 I was really Beth impressed. Beth did a great job. In that. Yeah. yeah. You guys. Beth, Beth did a great job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It looks really nice. Right. It looks really nice. Well, thanks again for being yes, with us. Thank you. This was so nice. I know. It was great. This and is the sun is out. And father, daughter. This yes. It it's the first father, daughter. Hey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we should have done this on Father's Day. Oh, oh, we oh, blew well. it. Oh, we well, that's it. okay. Oh, we're early. Can save it. Right. <laughs> now we're good. We're good. <laughs> no, we're good. Thanks so much, you yeah. guys. Yeah, so thank nice. you. It's great to be with you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. So I'm Allie. And I'm Callie. And whatever you do today, make sure it's creative. The Allie and Callie Artcast is a program of the Coeur d'Alene Arts and Culture Alliance and is sponsored by NIA. North Idaho Alliance, a woman-based leadership organization designed to inspire, uplift, and impact your community and lives. And Tubbs Coffee Roasters, globally sourced, locally roasted coffee.